Welcome back. So our body work is all done on our 2019 Sierra Denali. Now it's time to strip it all down so that the painting homes can come in and do their job. Let's get started. So first we're going to pull the door handle off, which was not a real bright idea because I'm going to have a little trouble getting in and out of it, but we're still going to do it anyway. We'll just take the screw out of the back, hold the cap on, slide the handle back, then pull off the gasket. Then climb over the passenger seat and open the door from the inside. Or go get a pick and reach in and grab the little lever. So now that our door is open, pull the little cap off behind the door handle, pull the little cap off on the grab handle, get our bolts out of there. Two more on the bottom. We'll pull this little trim plate down underneath the switches. Because there's one hidden screw behind there. I just pull the door panel off. We'll disconnect our door handle. And we'll unplug our wiring harness. Something's missing. Not sure where the speaker went. Maybe they had some aftermarket ones in there. They took them with and they totaled the truck. Somebody's been here before. So now we'll snap the top trim off. Unplug our mirror. Wiring harness off the door and unbolt our mirror. This one clip on the outside, kind of lift it up and pull it off of there. I'm going to pull the window channel out. We're doing all this just so we can paint the door. We don't have to take the channel all the way out. We're just going to set it inside. Then you can tape around it. We'll leave the window down. Now we have to pull the gasket off around the outside of the door. If you're working for insurance, you just break all these little clips. But since I don't want to have to buy each one, if you pull the gasket, it's shaped like a T. So you pull the gasket enough that one of the sides of the T comes out. You pull it away from the door a little bit and then slide it back down and you just keep repeating that for each one. Putting them back on is the same way. It takes a little time but you're not buying all these clips. Even if you try to take them off you get about 20% of them off and of the 20% probably 50% of those are no good because they get stretched out. And the ones that do break leave the ends of the plastic in the door to rattle for a while. So Got to slam the door a few times till they get to the bottom and stop rattling. So to me, it's worth it spending a little extra time to fight with this gasket. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to pull the rear one off. Just because he's painting that piece above the door, the back door is not getting painted. So we just need this out of the way so we don't have any tape lines out where they're going to show. probably my least favorite part of these doors. When you get down to the bottom, you can reach in on the inside and squeeze those clips, but on the top, you can't. So I found a new technique for windshield removal glass guys hate me. Saves a lot of time. And my back. So we're going to toss that in a pile. Now we can pull the roof channel trim out. It's just clipped in. Lift it up a little bit. You can release the tabs. Slide it off each side. The clips stay on there. Then you pop the clips off and put them back in the molding. And that's it. With everything we took off last time, plus the stuff we've taken off this time, it's ready for the painting gnome.
The painting gnomes were here, so let's throw our truck back together. I don't have all the parts, but I got enough that we can get a good start. So let's go. So we're just going to put it back together the way we took it apart. Put our window channel back in there. Start in a the corner. There's a little tab to line it up. And just push it in. Work your way around. Make sure it's not twisted. Snap our belt molding in. Put our one screw in the back of the belt molding. Click. And now we can put our favorite gasket back on. So you put one side of the T in a little hole in the gasket. Stretch the gasket over. And push it towards the door. And it'll hopefully shrink back onto the T. It's kind of a technique. And once you get the muscle memory down, it's pretty easy. It goes pretty fast. But it could take you a little while to learn exactly how far you need to move it. How much you need to push it. If you push it too far down or don't move it enough, the end of the T doesn't end up going into the gasket. But like I said, it's better than buying all those clips and listen to all the little pieces rattle inside the door. So we'll do it this way. I'll put our new mirror on. It's actually used. They had the best deal. Snap it in. Hold it down. the grommet for the wiring harness into the door. Make sure it seals. Snap our wiring harness in and plug it in. I'll plug in our door panel so we can put our window up. We need to put the window up in order to put the door handle on the outside. Pull the grab handle down and the water barrier. Now we can get to the door handle on the inside to push the lever out so that it'll catch the door handle. Slide it forward and lock it in. Put our little cap on the back and tighten it down. Works. Put our little grommet in there. Now when we have our door apart, it would be the perfect time to put cavity wax down in that lower seam to keep it from rusting out. But I've had a lot of comments saying that I waste my time doing stuff like that. So I want to show you how much I value all your opinions. And I do read your comments. So I'm going to uh, continue to do what I want. So we'll throw our cavity wax down in the bottom seam there. Get a good coating on it. And there you have it. Maybe that's why my rebuilds bring more than the 50% the experts say they will. So now we'll pull all of our clips off the top of the door panel and snap them back on our door. Stick our water barrier back up there. Put our grab handle bracket back on. Put our window sweep in. I went over to Scott's GM Truck Emporium and they had a speaker in stock, even had the pigtail. So we just, he trunk our wires on there. I'll throw it back in here. Probably have to check the other side because I bet it's missing too. Put our screw in the top of the speaker and we can put the trim around the inside of the window. Some of these it's easier to do with the window down. These aren't too bad, they clip right in. This is actually supposed to go on before the gasket on the outside, but that gasket is harder to get on with this trim on there. So that's why I do it afterwards. If you had a new gasket with all new clips on it, put the inside trim on there and then put the gasket on. So we'll put the door panel on, plug in the harness and connect our handle, line it up and snap it on. The bodywork gnome left some dusty fingerprints for the detailing gnome. I don't know why these gnomes can't get along. My next video might be 
two gnomes in the octagon. I don't know why it's come to this. Put our bolts in our handle. Our grab handle. Our two in the bottom. Our one hidden one. We can put all the other caps back on there. Our fake wood. And now we're going to put the gasket up in the front of the door. These are really annoying. You got to take them off so that they can paint the edge of it. Otherwise you end up with paint all over it. When the door is off, they're really easy to put on. I'm not taking the door off just to put that on. So we're going to struggle a little bit. Just got to kind of weasel it in there. Because it goes behind the top hinge. Goes behind the wiring harness. Behind the door check. And behind the lower hinge. And there's not a whole lot of room between the hinges. And it's curved. Makes it exciting. So now we'll put our gasket on the back door. It's so much fun. Takes a little patience. I need a gasket gnome. Well, we'll just work our way around. We'll put our little filler on the passenger door. We had this off because we painted the right front fender. Slide it down in there. It is nice that the push pins stay in there. So you don't have to try and line them up. You just get the gasket in place and push it in. We're going to put a blanket, cover up the back of the cab. It's time to put the bed on. And we don't want the bed to hit the back of the cab. If it does, hopefully the blanket will keep it from scratching or denting. Keep me in good graces with the painting gnome if I don't have to have him repaint it. I ordered a pizza back when I started this, so hopefully the pizza girl will be here. She can help me put the bed on. So the pizza girl's here, without a pizza again. But she did stay to help, so I was told I'm not supposed to complain. I would prefer the pizza, actually. So we'll line up our bed lift. Right now, the bed's sitting on the cart. We'll lift it off of our cart. It's ready to go on the truck. Here's where all the clean freaks get upset because I didn't clean the bed before I put it on. Oh well. What'd you expect? If you actually expected me to clean it, you must be new here. That's the detailing gnome's job. Basically, we just don't want to hit the back of the cab, and we needed to get it centered on the bumper. If it's too far back when we put it down, it'll scratch up the bumper. And these bumpers actually go on before the bed. It would be smarter to make it the other way around, but engineers. You can take the bumpers off if you just unbolt the back of the bed and lift it up a little bit. That's extra work, so we'll just 
be a little more careful. Take our time here. Just need to move the bed over to the passenger side a little bit. We'll let it down. You can fine tune it once it's sitting on the frame. fine tuning. There are pins up in the front that it'll drop into. I don't remember if there's any in the rear. There might be. Make sure it's centered. You want even gaps on the bumper on both sides. You want even gap across the back of the cab. That front's locked into its pin, so I hope the gaps are right. Otherwise, the frame's bent. We'll slide the arms of the bed lift in. And we'll just lift the whole lift out of there, disconnect it from the forklift later. I'm sorry, the mobile bed lift. Need a taller pizza girl. Or a shorter truck, one or the other. So our bed's all lined up. We took our little blanket out of there. We can start reconnecting it. Pull our fuel cap off. Slide the filler neck up inside the bed. Line it up in the pocket. Then we can run our screws in. Which we did successfully without dropping any of them into the filler neck. Put the cap back on. Put our retainer on the tether and the gas door and close it up. We can run our bolts in the back. These are the ones that go through the frame and the trailer hitch. So I have to use the long extension. Not just because I chose the excessively long extension for no reason like I normally do. So we'll tighten them down. And we get to our ones that are inside the wheel well. Do the ones on the passenger side. Oh, our carpet's dirty. Do I call a detailer or a carpet cleaner to clean these wheel liners? Now we'll get our bolts up in the front. That little plastic thing next to it is the pin that lines it up. There's only one on one side. Now we can plug our harnesses in. We're only going to plug in three. We're going to leave the tailgate harness unplugged because we're going to be taking the tailgate off later. So there's just the two for the taillights and the one for the cargo lights in the bed. Now we can put the filler bracket on the front of the fender. We just had this off so they could paint it. You gotta use those primitive ratchets. No power tools fit in there. So now we can plug in our headlight. Slide it into place. And bolt it down. Make sure you torque it to manufacturer specs or that your impact identifies as a torque wrench. Now we can put our feller in 
had to get a new one because the plastic on the bottom of the other one was all torn up. So it just clips into that little bracket. And there's one bolt in the front. It also clips into the bottom of the headlight. Now we got a little wire repair. Our fog light wire got pinched and split both wires straight through. So we're just going to use some heat shrink terminals. A lot of people don't like these, but they're quick, they're easy, and they last. If you use them properly, you never have a problem. Well, I've never had a problem. And I have a few of them that have been on the road for 20 plus years. So just crimp the ends down. And then we'll heat them up. We'll let them cool off and then we'll tape them up. I'll pull our wiring harness out of our bracket. And we can unbolt our bracket. And pull our bumper bracket out of there. We're going to change the bumper. It was a little worse than I thought. So all the stuff on the bumper, we'll still use. Apparently along with headliners, bumper overhaul is required in every one of these trucks I buy. Pop all of our J-nuts off of there. With our J-nut removing hammer. Those are available in my Amazon store. You might want to pick them up. They're listed as trim clip pliers. Uh, but the price might be going up now that they are a multi-purpose tool. Unbolt our bracket on the other side. Put the wiring harness out. Those brackets actually weigh more than the bumper itself. Pull our J-nuts off of there. And pop them all on our new bumper. Disconnect our parking sensors. Pull the harness off. Make sure you keep that little gasket that goes in the parking sensor. It likes to fall off or stay in the other half when you don't notice. And then it falls out later and when you put it back together it's missing. So I always check to make sure they stayed on the sensor. I'll pour a little baffle out of there. Just connect the one clip for the wiring harness. Take it all out of the way. Now we can unbolt our fog lights. And they kind of clip in there. Unbolt the passenger side. Only had to take two bolts out of that one because it's broken. Now we can pull all of our clips off. We'll get our tow hook bezels off the chrome plated plastic that GM likes to pretend is a skid plate off the front. Pull the step pad off. Just squeeze the little tabs. They pop off. There's one clip at the end. Just push the center in and snap it out of there. Now we can unbolt our lower balance. In the pile. Now our new balance comes with new J-nuts, but we still need all the bolts. So we're going to use our multi-purpose trim clip pliers to hold the J-nuts and unbolt them. Don't try using your fingers. Um, it doesn't go well. Don't ask me how I know. But I've learned it a couple times. 
And I can pop out the little bezels for our parking sensors. And snap them into our new bumper. These outer ones don't give that same reassuring click that the inner ones do to let you know they're installed. But they're in there. Put all our J-nuts on. Snap our tow hook bezels in. Our license plate cover, bezel, filler. I don't know what they want to call that. And we'll put our skid plate on. High strength plastic. Chrome plated, of course. Now I'm going to start bolting everything in. And here's our bumper. The dents on the bottom I did see, but our brackets are bent. The whole inside of it underneath that skid plate is all bent. Probably could straighten it with the time it would take to get it perfect and just replace it. The bumpers themselves are not super expensive. The stupid plastic that's attached to it actually cost more. So now we'll snap our J-nuts on. Put our baffle in here. This baffle is actually for the trans cooler. Sits right behind it. Plug in our parking sensors. Slide the edge of the baffle in there. Then we can bolt the top of it in. Bolt the bottom of it in. Bolt in the rest of our skid plate. And now we can put the lower valance on. There's two bolts that are longer than the others. They go through the skid plate, the bumper, and this valance. All the rest of them pretty much just go through the bumper and the valance. We'll start the two by hand, and we'll run the other ones in. Get them all started before we start tightening them up. Because this thing does have a little play in it. We don't want to have to loosen it up and start over. So. Now we're going to change our fog light. The light itself is still good, but our bezel is broken. We have our fog light removal tool. Those trim clip pliers seem to be the tool of the day. So you just squeeze the tabs, pop the little retainers out of there, and then they just snap into the new bezel. You can buy the whole fog light assembly for $47, or you can buy just the bezel for $40. So I saved the seven bucks and reused my light. So now you can pop it in there. Start our screws. and tighten them down. Put the fog light on the other side. Ah, oh, it's dirty. Why didn't I clean that part no one's gonna see? Snap the step pad in. Put the two retainers in the outsides. And now we can put our bumper brackets in. Plug the harness in underneath, plug the fog light in, then plug the harness in up on top. Start all our bolts. Just a couple threads, just so we know they're in there. We'll tighten them all down. Make sure they're all lined up. Double fisting bolt installation. And we'll torque them all down with our electric torque wrench. Make sure I didn't forget any. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. 
that one harness connector, it's on the bottom. I don't know why they had to do that. Run all our bolts in. And there's a baffle inside the fender. Just gonna snap that in there. Put a little push pin in. And we're ready to put the bumper on. Hopefully without scratching the paint. Slide it over the brackets in the front. I loosened up the brackets in the rear and moved them down. Trying to let everything up at once is a little bit difficult, so easier when you only have to worry about part of it. The brackets in the back move pretty easy. We'll do those in a second. We'll put a bolt in the top of the bumper so it doesn't end up on the floor and then we'll go see what issues the pizza less pizza girl is having on her side. So somehow the one on the driver's side got stuck under the bumper. We just move the bumper around it. Turn our brackets in the front. Make sure our gap is right under the headlights. We put the grill in. Make sure our gap is right across the bottom of the grill. This is our brand new grill. My old ones going on the wall. So it just snaps into the headlight mounting panel. Use our grill installation tool. Now we'll put the four bolts in the top. Then we're gonna let our assistant put the closeout panel in. It's time she learns how to do some of this stuff. Line up all the little rubber baby buggy bumpers and start pushing in the push pins. Now I'm going to be the lovely assistant and hand her the push pins. So far, so good. trouble with that one. A little bit of a struggle. We got that one. I guess there's no push pin reps for time and CrossFit. We'll have to introduce her to the push pin installation tool. There we go. Those CrossFit installation tools just don't cut it. So if it doesn't drop down in there, you twist it a little bit, and it'll slide in. And that's where I lost my patience. Time for me to finish the rest. We need to get this done today. So now we can tighten up those bumper brackets in the back. Loosen up the two bolts on the frame. Move the bumper where you want it and tighten them down. Tighten up the outside. 
And there's a little baffle. We took this off because it's really hard to get the bumper on when that's on there. But we'll put it on now. It's just two screws that hold it on. Bolt it in there. Now we'll plug in our parking sensors and fog lights. Knock the dirt out of the harness so it'll actually engage. We'll clip it together, then clip it into the skid plate up above. And we go over to the driver's side, tighten up that bracket. Push the wheel liner inside. It was outside the bumper. Now we need to take the GMC name off the grill. Because for all that money you pay for the grill, you don't even get the nameplate. So we'll just squeeze the tabs and pop it off. And our gaps are a little off on our tailgate. Not sure if it's from the accident. I've seen some pretty bad ones on trucks that were never wrecked. So this might just be a quality control problem. But I don't like it, so we're gonna fix it. This is probably not one of my brightest ideas. We'll see how it goes. If it goes south, can't say I didn't warn me. So we have our bed realignment tool in there. You might recognize it as the bed lift, welding table, frame rack, or a forklift. We'll pull it over. I believe the manufacturer's specs was three-quarter throttle on the forklift. We'll see how it fits. Closed it up. See if it matches. I totally knew it was gonna work. Looks better than most after they roll off the assembly line. I think there was probably something heavy in the bed. When it landed, it shifted it off to the side and pushed that side of the bed out. Because I have seen some pretty bad gaps, but this was worse than the ones I normally see. But it's all better now. So I'm out of parts for today. I guess this is a good place to stop. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.